Shack. Talking about episode number eight. Big Sugar Bases, part two. All right, this is a bass that got used a lot and still gets used a lot. Uh, Gary and I both put a lot of miles on this one. It's a early 60s, I want to think about a 1961 Gibson EBO, which is that one big, massive honking pickup right there. Some beautiful checking on it. Lord knows we weathered it our, ourselves, we relicked it. But we love that slotted headstock. As you can see, some of the lettering has started to flake off of there, unfortunately. And I don't know what can be done about that. Maybe something, I don't know. But the 1961 EBO showed up one day on tour. A young fella came up to us after a show and back in those days we had been using Ampeg SVT amps a lot. I was using them, Gary was using them. Uh, so our stage had about half a dozen Ampeg SVT heads. And a young fella came up and said, Cordy, I'd really love to, to get one of those SVTs off you. I thought, well, I don't know. I'm right in, not feeling like getting rid of any of them. What to, would you have in mind? And he <laughs> pulled this out of a case, and you never, you never seen someone pick up an SVT so quickly <laughs> and hand it over. Uh, so I hope that young man is uh, still enjoying that SVT because we have thoroughly enjoyed the uh, the EBO. And just another great example of Gary's technique of picking every last note is the song from Heated, "Where I Stand." And it's a, it's a prime example. And it's a really difficult bass line to play, as simple as it sounds. And I'll demonstrate that for you here. But you gotta pluck every note. There's no hammer on, there's no way to cheat it. And Gary would go. So you can imagine after seven minutes of that, your your hand might get a little fatigued. Uh, a piece of vulcanized rubber underneath the bridge cover, between the strings and the cover, any little piece of rubber, not foam rubber. Foam rubber doesn't tend to do, I find, the same kind of damping. It will damp the string, but the rubber, it's just kind of a thing here, you see, this kind of, it's an old piece of bungee cable. And I keep this line around the studio, and I have tortured bass players for years uh, in different projects, making them I'll use a rubber drafting eraser, any number of things to stick under the strings to deaden the sustain of the bass. Because I really don't feel like a bass has any place, you know, hanging over long notes. The notes are long enough. But I still, to this day, will use this bass for all manner of things. Of course, great for reggae, you know. I use it a lot in Austin when I'm playing with Ray Arteaga, playing Cuban son, uh, and in any kind of folkloric music like that. This is a great instrument for that. Again, just because the notes really don't have any sustain to muddy up the arrangement, and, and it just has that great fundamental bottom in. Gibson EBO. There were many different bases in our touring arsenal and uh, they were scattered all around. Of course, you know, there's Gibson Grabbers and Rippers and all kinds of other Gibson basses. But Gary is probably most well known for this Tobacco Sunburst T-Bird. And we had a couple of them. This is one of Gary's. 
It's around 2000, the folks at Gibson laid some guitars on us. Uh, my signature guitar came around that time, my, my signature double neck, and they laid a couple of basses on Gary, and he had a, a Gibson SG bass from about 2000. It never really suited him, so they swapped it out for just again, like just right off the rack, uh, a Thunderbird. And man, once Gary got his hands on this, he just, he just could not be without it. And he would constantly intonate the thing. The headstock had snapped and we had to have it repaired. And he wore a big thumbprint into it. And that he just couldn't, couldn't really be without his Gibson Thunderbird. And he, uh, he really did make an amazing sound on it. In fact, I, I remember hearing that when the, the legendary Robbie Shakespeare was in Toronto doing a reggae session and needed a bass and wasn't happy with whatever basses they had at the studio. Somebody got Gary on the phone and got him out of bed and said, bring your bass, man. And Gary was very proud to tell me how much Robbie loved the T-Bird. So, and I, then I believe it. One of my favorites for Gary in this bass is the, uh, the bass line to Nicotina, which he played in his unmistakable style. So there's the Gibson T-Bird. And those are just some of the big sugar basses, but those are the ones that made the classic recordings and the ones we're best known for, and uh, I'm happy to tell you about them here today. You know, back in December of 2018, we had a truly magical night and uh, a fitting tribute to the life and legacy of our dear friend and brother Gary Lowe after he passed from cancer. And we had such an amazing night of music. So many of our friends came to contribute and bring the love and, and the joy of music to that night. And we had a special friend who donated this Epiphone T-Bird bass, much like uh, the one Gary played. And it uh, made the rounds that night and everybody who performed on the show got their signature on it. And it's our intention to auction off this bass and raise some money for the estate and for Gary's family, who we still uh, are very close to and care for very deeply. So uh, be looking for that on eBay. We will be posting that on all of our social medias, where and when that auction goes up. Hopefully we can raise some money with the sale of this uh, one-of-a-kind rock and roll artifact. GJ in the Soundcheck.